Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you watched the first episode of Arcade Pickers, you noticed I picked up that Street Fighter II World Warrior. Now, I didn't notice when I was there that the monitor was having some focus issues. So I did the normal stuff and examined the monitor chassis. You know, didn't look like there was any real issues with any of the capacitors. And I don't know, something kind of told me that maybe it could be the flyback. So what we're gonna do is let's examine the flyback and see if there's any issues and see if we can get this thing back to being bright and tight again. All right, so I safely removed the monitor chassis and discharged the CRT without killing myself. That's good, so let's inspect this flyback. So you can see right there, just as I suspected, there is a crack in the flyback. Now this can happen for various reasons, but sometimes people will do cap kits and not replace the flyback, and sometimes those cap kit replacements will actually cause the flyback to crack. So in this case, we definitely need to replace this. Now keep in mind, before you remove uh, the monitor chassis and you discharge a CRT, always treat this like it's got 30,000 volts and it can kill you. So be very careful, refer back to this video, I'm gonna have one above if you need to know how to discharge a monitor chassis. I can't stress that enough, be safe. All right, so before you get started here, you're gonna need to know what kind of monitor chassis you have. This is the K7901 Wells Gardner monitor chassis. There's a couple websites you can go to. I'll have a link in the description of where to go to to identify your monitor chassis. But once you do that, then you're also gonna figure out what flyback you need. This is a K7000 flyback. You can flip the board over and you can easily identify where those pins are for this. Now, for me, I'm not a very good at desoldering, so I would suggest you pick up a good desoldering iron. I'm using the Hako FR301. I'll have a link in the description to that. It'll make this job a hell of a lot easier. All right, let's desolder this thing and see if we can get it to come off. Now, I've taken these off in the past and sometimes it takes a little more pressure than, you, than you'd think, but you're not gonna break it, just be careful. So I'm gonna flip the board over here and give it a good tug. And there it is. All right, that was a little crunchy, but I think it's gonna be fine. So there's the old one. Let's get the new one and replace this sucker. But before we do that, I'm just gonna clean up the board a little bit. All right, so this is probably one of the hardest parts is getting this pins lined up. Once you do, it should pop right through. And on the other end, you're gonna see your pins. We're gonna to wanna to flux them up real nice. So get them nice and fluxy. Be real, real generous with that flux. Uh, I'm not a soldering or soldering expert here. So I just kind of say, heat that pad up, come in at an angle, try to get that soldering iron pointed up into the sky after you rip it away and it should give you this nice pointy ball of molten solder. Yeah, you're not coming here for soldering tips, trust me. I'm getting better, but it's still pretty rough, so just don't judge. But if this thing stays on, we should be good, and we will see, does it fix our focus issue? All right, before we put everything back in, I wanted to show you how cracked this really was. So I removed some of the dirt, and I was like, man, this thing is like really cracked. So not only did it have that crack on the top, I had a crack on the bottom too that extended on the side. So this thing definitely was jacked up. But at first glance, when you're looking at the dirt on it, you almost wouldn't have known it was cracked. So had I not kind of looked closer at this and really inspected it, I wouldn't really have known, you know, what level of damage was really on this thing. So there's no doubt this may or may not fix our issue, but it 100% needed to be replaced regardless. All right, it's a moment of truth. We're gonna put the monitor chassis back in. Be real careful when you do this. Also, make sure you maybe take pictures of the way it looked before. Just in case you don't know where everything goes, that will definitely help guide you when you're putting it back together. Now, I also double checked to make sure the monitor was discharged, but it was already discharged. I knew that, but again, just be safe. It's better safe than sorry, right? All right, let's see. Did this actually fix our focus issue? Let's turn on the game and check it out. All right, so after the flyback replacement, it is looking bright and tight. I just had to make a couple of turns of the focus knob, and this looks really, really good. So I'll show you in comparison what it looked like before. It was really smudgy, it wasn't clear, it really looked pretty damn bad. Now, I'll show you again what it looks like now. It's really crisp, it looks great. I do have to have a cup make a couple minor adjustments, but other than that, it looks really good. And I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison here. The left is gonna be with the new flyback replacement and the right is the way it was. So sometimes all it takes is a $25 part to get you up and running again. 
All right, guys, it's final thoughts time. So we are standing in front of the Street Fighter II cabinet that I got from Flynn. So if you haven't gone and checked out Arcade Pickers episode one, go check it out and you'll see exactly how I got this. But this cabinet needed a little bit of work before it's ready to go to a new home. So I replaced the marquee and then I had that dreaded problem with the monitor and the focus. Now, I don't want you to think that every time a flyback replacement or a cap kit is gonna fix your issues, but a lot of times a great starting point is a cap kit and you can visually inspect those things to see if the capacitors are swollen and stuff like that. It just so happens that I noticed the flyback was cracked and it worked. So, hey, pretty cool. But anyways, a couple more things we have to do to this. We're gonna have to replace the bezel. Uh, the monitor bezel is gonna be provided by Joe Sabo, so we'll see that coming here soon. And then we're gonna have to put this nice looking control panel on this thing that you saw from the show if you watched it. So anyways, we got a little bit of work to do. There's a couple team molding things I wanna fix up. I may just put a fresh, I may just put all fresh team molding on the whole thing to clean it up. Uh, we're gonna need to put side art on too, so I got that, so we'll do that as well. But really, the game is in pretty good working order, so I'm pretty stoked about that. So that's it guys, if you guys enjoyed the content, give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel, and always put your comments below, I wanna hear from you. And if you haven't gone and checked out Arcade Pickers, definitely go check it out, we had such fun filming it, and we're filming the new episode this Sunday for episode two. That's it for now, and we will see you on the next one.